Parks Accounting, Purchasing and Payables. There are going to be times throughout the season where you need to receive a delivery at the park or you may be asked to go out and make a purchase for your park. This slideshow is going to go through the procedures and best practices for making those purchases and it'll also give you some information as far as how payables in general are processed for Vermont State Parks. Some key points to remember when making purchases. Number one, you should always check with your supervisor or your regional coordinator prior to making a purchase. The reason for this is that a lot of items are stocked at regional offices and maintenance shops. It's very likely that if there is something you need, we already have it on hand. If we don't, your supervisor or regional coordinator will advise you to go out and make a purchase or to call an approved vendor to place an order. Anytime you are making a purchase or placing an order with a vendor, you'll want to provide your park code as a PO number. This helps the business office to track purchases and obtain any needed approvals so that we can process vendor payments in a timely and efficient manner. If you aren't sure what your park code is, you can get that information from your regional coordinator or from your supervisor. This next one I really want to stress. You should always, always, always consolidate your purchases rather than making multiple trips. There are a few reasons for this. First, it takes just as much time and effort to process a $10 invoice as it does to process a $100 invoice. If you have 10 $10 invoices, that'll take significantly more time for the regional staff and for the business office to process and issue payment. Additionally, it goes without saying that the more trips you make to the store, the less time you spend in the park being available to serve our customers and our guests. So we really want to minimize the time spent going out and making several trips whenever possible. Vermont State Parks is a state entity and therefore we are sales tax exempt when making purchases that would otherwise be subject to sales tax. If for some reason a vendor is trying to charge you sales tax and is requesting a tax exemption certificate, what you can do is contact the business office and we will reach out to the vendor to provide them with our sales tax exemption certificate as well as answer any other questions or provide any other documentation that they may need. You should always save your receipts. These are necessary in order for the business office to issue payment. Missing receipts can lead to delayed or missed payments and in some cases with certain vendors, any delayed or missed payment will cause suspension of our charging privileges. There are several staff members and employees that use our charge accounts and we really want to avoid suspension of charging privileges so that everyone can use the account whenever they need it without problems. In some cases, centrally ordered items may be delivered to the park. In these cases, you won't necessarily have a receipt, but you'll want to make sure that you save the packing slip or delivery slip as a substitute for the receipt. If a delivery is not accompanied by a delivery slip or packing slip, you'll want to reach out to your regional coordinator to let them know what was received, the date it was received, as well as whether or not the order was complete or if there were items missing. Just as a quick example, if your park happens to have a concession stand that you ordered ice cream sandwiches for, you ordered 10 ice cream sandwiches, but the vendor only sent five, that's really important to note so that the regional coordinator can provide that information to the business office so that we can ensure that we are being billed accurately. Next, we're just going to go through a quick overview of how payables flow through from the park to the business office and how vendors get paid. At the park is usually where it starts. The park manager or park staff will make an approved purchase with an approved vendor, or they'll receive a delivery at the park, or they may use an approved service vendor, for example, using Casella for trash pickup or using a vendor for vehicle or equipment repair services. The park manager is responsible for sending all delivery slips, packing slips, and receipts to their regional coordinator. 
it's recommended to send in all of your receipts and delivery slips as soon as possible after the delivery is made. Each transaction should have some kind of receipt or delivery slip or packing slip. When you receive that receipt or delivery slip, you'll, you'll want to write your part code on it. And that's just a quick reminder um, of what we mentioned before. Providing your part code as a PO means that that part code will show up on an invoice. If you also put your part code on a receipt or delivery slip, that makes it that much easier for the business office to pair that receipt with the invoice and process payment. For vehicles and equipment services, you can and should write the plate number or just note equipment on your receipt so that it's very clear what that purchase or service was for. Some receipts aren't always clear and some delivery slips sometimes don't have any detail as far as what was being delivered. In these instances, you'll want to make a note either right on the delivery slip or you can attach a post-it or even put it in the body of an email just noting what exactly was delivered, what was purchased, as well as any other information that you feel you should include to help your regional coordinator approve the purchase for the business office to then issue payment in a timely manner. Here are just a few examples of what invoices and receipts might look like. You'll see the very first one on the left there, Creed Ice, is a handwritten receipt. This is perfectly fine if that's the vendor's normal practice. You will want to make sure that they are providing the detail if they're handwriting as far as the quantity and unit price and the total price for the purchase being made. Additionally, you'll see Green's Ace Hardware does have the PO number of 3025. In many cases, a signature will not be legible to the business office. And this is where that PO number really comes in handy as far as helping us to identify who's made the purchase or what it's for. Your regional coordinator receives and reviews receipts and delivery slips for all transactions for your region, not just your park. They'll review each receipt or delivery slip to check and make sure that everything is accurate and an approved purchase. They will then add financial coding that will help the business office process the payment and they will then send the receipts and delivery slips to the business office so they can be paired with invoices. Again, it's worth mentioning that all purchases are handled the same way. A $1.24 invoice takes just as many people to process and just as much time as a $100 purchase. Because your regional coordinators are reviewing receipts from every park in your region, it becomes that much more important to ensure that you are consolidating your purchases whenever possible. After a receipt has been reviewed and approved and coded by the regional coordinator, it is then sent to the business office. The business office receives every receipt from all of the state parks and then verifies that everything has been approved and coded accurately. Vendors also provide copies of invoices to the Montpelier office and at the business office, we essentially take that vendor copy of the invoice and pair it up with the regional copy of the receipt that has been approved. In most cases, or in the ideal case, the vendor copy of the invoice and the receipt received from the region will match and everything will be accurate and coded, approved, good to go. It will then be entered into the payment system and money will then be mailed to the vendor. In some cases, if a receipt is missing or if something appears to be inaccurate, the business office will then bounce that back to the regional coordinator for additional review and approval. In some cases, the regional coordinator may also come back to the park with additional questions or to get additional information about a purchase. There are a number of reasons that bills don't get paid or don't get paid in a timely manner. We're going to go through the top five reasons that park invoices don't get paid timely. Number five, my dog or the park dog ate the receipt. I have actually heard this as an excuse before, but 
more realistically, this is just a case of the missing receipt. If your dog has eaten it or if it has just gotten lost, you'll just need to contact your regional coordinator to advise that a purchase has been made but that no receipt is available. Number four, the park staff has done so much shopping, the office is overflowing with receipts. If your contact station is overflowing with receipts, you're more likely to misplace one and it won't make it to your regional coordinator for review and approval. If the regional coordinator's office is overflowing with receipts, that means that it's going to take that much more time for them to review and approve and code and get the, those receipts to the business office so that we can then pair them with a vendor invoice and issue payment. It's really important to consolidate your purchases and ask yourself before you go shopping, do we really need this? Is it something we already have or that I can get through my supervisor or maintenance technician or regional coordinator? Have I gotten permission to go out and buy this? It's really important to make sure you consolidate your purchases. Number three, the business office is waiting to match a park receipt with a vendor invoice. A single missing receipt, whether it's because your dog ate it or because you just have a large stockpile of receipts from not consolidating your purchases, that single missing receipt could mean late fees, delayed payments, extra time reconciling our state accounts, and in some extreme cases, suspended charging privileges. Every single receipt is important to get to your regional coordinator. Number two, paperwork is lost in the mail, stuck in your email outbox, or stalled in transit through the payment system. Generally speaking, you should be scanning and emailing your receipts to your regional coordinator. However, there may be a rare instance where you may be asked to mail something. If you do, you'll just want to be sure that you have kept track of what you've what you've mailed and when you've mailed it. If something is stuck in your email outbox, you'll just have to go in there and resend the information. If something does get stalled in transit through the payment system, that's something that the regional coordinators and business office staff will work together to resolve. Finally, the number one reason that invoices don't get paid is that parks receipts are not submitted to the regional coordinators. You should get into the habit of immediately putting your receipts and invoices and packing slips in a safe place so that they can be submitted. The best practice, as I've already mentioned, is to send receipts as soon as possible after a purchase is made or a delivery is received. Invoices and receipts and packing slips, delivery slips should be emailed to your regional staff at least weekly. That is the bare minimum. Again, best practice is to do as soon as possible after a purchase is made. If you have any questions, you can reach out to your regional coordinator or to the business office.